So I can't believe we're already on, on episode eight of season three. Connie, can you believe they it? They just keep coming. They just do. We find out some wonderful things. So we're going to meet with Will Holcomb. Um, Will is a local author and playwright. Um, and his wonderful wife, Lisa, runs uh, Bastrop Opera House. So you guys are going to get a little sneak peek into their world. You know, go figure that somebody as wonderful and creative as Lisa would have such an amazing husband. And then you're going to meet with a couple of guys, too. Two of my friends, Bill and Richard, are here to talk to us about the Veterans Car Show that is lovingly referred to in Bastrop as the Heroes and Hot Rods. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Our next guest is Will Holcomb, local author, playwright. What do you not do, Will? Um, that's a very short list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that you have the play is talk to us about kind of clinically undepressed because I understand that it'll be showing at the Opera House in March. Yeah, it's it's a remarkable show just in how the audiences react. We this is the second time at Bastrop Up Opera House, and when uh, my wife uh, introduced it the last showing of last time we did it she asked how many people had already seen the play and over half the audience raised their hand so they it was a sold out crowd and over half of them had already been there once so it's, it's a remarkable show that's great yeah it's, it's, it's real exciting to watch that come alive and so for those of you who don't know who his wife is his wife is the famous lisa holcomb <laughs> she runs the best drop off our house she's amazing she's been a guest on the show and so she really does have a hubby if she tells you that because you're <laughs> Living proof. <laughs> so it is a Christmas where we know we've got logistic problems. People are already saying you need to order those Christmas gifts. I think your books would be fantastic Christmas yeah, gifts. They, they're great. Books signed, books by the author is our great gifts for everybody. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about The Infinite Jeff because um, that's one of the one of your book series, yeah. is what, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a three-part series. It, it explores most of the questions in life. It, it answers. Oh, that's all. Just that, the that, questions of yeah, life. That's yeah. great. It, it, it does that. But uh, 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 society, religion, business, uh, environment, it, it covers everything in a, in a fun story. The, the, the interesting thing about The Infinite Jeff is, everybody will tell you, is it reads super easy and fast. But when you put it down, you'll be thinking about Got a lot. Got some things of, to think about. You'll be thinking about a lot of things, right? Sounds like a great book for a uh, book study for oh, yeah. people to read together yeah. and have share some thoughts about it, it's been in a number uh, it's been used in a number of uh book clubs so it, it's it's not new to that and sunday schools actually use it because it's it explores a lot of uh, ideas it's not a, a a religious book in that sense it has a lot of spirituality but it's not a pounding a certain idea so but in a lot of churches really like it Gives you something to think about, and oh, we yeah. can all do that. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in finding a book, where can they find it here in Bastrop County? Here, I've got it in um, the Vibe Tribe Carry Zone in Smithville. Uh, it's a good thing. Uh, Rio Social House has them there. And uh, and and then Amazon's always, it. you know, we got the supply issue, but as much as I probably don't want to say Amazon, but they, they can get it out to everybody. and. They're printed here in the U.S. and you'll have it in days. And now I think you told me there's a chance somebody might be able to find a copy at the Opera House as well. Yeah, yeah, the Opera House has a few copies. Yeah, I keep some there. Yeah. So are you working on a new book? Uh, this is a four-part series. The Infinite Jeff is a four-part series. And I'm um, working on part four to complete that. Then I've got the start of four other books that will be, once I finish part four, I'll be going on those. Yeah. So talk to us about your writing process. Do you write? Are you at middle of the night? Are you early in the morning? Do you, uh, is it whenever the mood strikes you? How do you go through that? Yes. <laughs> All of those. Uh, no, uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, I, I write a lot when I drive in the sense that I, I've, I've always had stories just going through my head. And I never realized that until I wrote The Infinite Jeff. And I wrote Clinical and Depressed in, in a weekend uh, be, wow. because it was already written. Just I, in I, your head. Yeah, right? so, so I, was, I was commuting to work. I had it going through my head. And one weekend I decided just to write it down. And the same with The Puzzler, another one of my plays. I, I wrote that in two evenings because it was already written. Where The Infinite Jeff was a, a fun experience because I didn't know the story. And so I just started writing. And over six months, that as whole story fell out uh, and we just had to go back and edit it.
But that was, the way I described that process is a lot like um, reading a book because there was times I was writing until three in the morning because I had to find out what was going to happen. Right. I, right. I had no idea where it was going. And, and it's the strangest thing to just be moving fingers on the keyboard and wondering what, where it's going. Right, right. Because characters tend to sometimes develop themselves as you're going. And... Well, and what I tell a lot of writers is, is uh, once you have the characters developed, you quit writing and you start transcribing. So you just let right. them behave and you just tell what they do. This blank look that you see, Will, uh -huh. is because that TJ is a creative person, but I didn't get that part. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, I'm I really just, looking for some formulas and some processes. No, so no, it's, it's, that's I just, fantastic. I really admire your creative capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. So great to have someone like you here in Bastrop County. We really do have such an amazing group of people that make up this wonderful community. And you're obviously one of them. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm really excited to see clinically and depressed. So it's when did you say it would be March? March. In March. In March. Yeah, and the people that are, they will be streaming it. And and I'm just I'm real excited about something. We're gonna build a rotating stage. That's oh, something I'm real yeah. excited about excited about. And so there's three main scene three main areas. So we'll just build a stage that rotates between the three main areas. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Always yeah. something special going on in the opera house. Oh yeah, sure. they're they're really yeah. moving and growing and experimenting and trying new stuff. So it's well, thanks for joining us today. Yes. Will Holcomb, one of the key threads in the tapestry that makes up Bastrop County. We Thank are so blessed me. to have you. Thank you so much, Will. Yeah. Our next guests are with my favorite event that we do in Bastrop County, which is Heroes and Hot Rods. So what year was the first year of Heroes and Hot Rods? Do you guys well, remember? Well, I can't, I'm not very good at math, but this is the 15th minus <laughs> yes, last year. And I love your shirts. If you guys can't see them up close, there's just a little X through the zero for 2020 and it's all about 2021. So talk to us about the show. Well, this year we've, uh, well, the biggest change we've got is, is with the new Main Street. We've had to work with the layouts, had to, had to hold the number of cars at 400. We just ran out of room. And we now have over 400 or 400 cars registered as a 70. So it will be a packed show. And now it's time for all the guests and visitors to show up and enjoy the show in the town. Well, it is such a great family event and everybody's going to find a car that they like. The variety of cars is amazing. Folks come from all over. But one of the reasons that it makes it so very special is it's always Veterans Day weekend. Right. And the commitment to the veterans that your organization makes is just outstanding and warms my heart. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to talk about any of the special programs that you've done with the veterans this year? Well, we have a relationship with pretty much every veterans organization in the area. And, uh, you know, with number wise, we've donated probably $32,000 uh, from the proceeds of the event the last two or three years. And at least 80%, 75-80% of that goes to veteran support organizations, mostly local, but we do like the Fisher House and, and uh, other ones that are in the state that support uh, veterans as well. Uh, we have obviously the Restoration Ranch and and we also allow any veterans related uh, organizations uh, free spots at the, at the event. And of course the tribute ceremony is really the, the exciting part and I know you're part of that. 
Uh, we usually have a flyover with a vintage uh, military plane, uh, sometimes two or three. And then also we have all, but it kind of, that's the part that really makes you kind of emotional is when they're marching down the street uh, because we have, a, a, we call it a parade or a, a parade march uh, where all the veterans, uh, whether they're in the car show or not, you know, it could be just uh, residents here or people from out of town that are spectating, that they'll march down the street this time from the post office and then down to the museum. And then this year, as uh, Richard was saying, our footprint we had to change the footprint in order to make up for the loss of some of the parking spaces. So it's not a loss of parking spaces. It's an addition of sidewalk, Bill. So our footprint now goes up to the, the courthouse. Right. And what better place? And we used to do the veteran ceremony on the corner in front of the post office because that was a little more central to the show. But now the central point is the museum where there are fantastic military and other displays about the history of Bastrop as well. But then we're going two blocks down to the courthouse and the Veterans March will end at the Veterans Memorial area of the courthouse. So what better place to do that? And Willie Pena is a big organizer for that event. We work concurrently with him to make sure that it's a, a success and how it uh, operates within the car show. And Mr. Pena is also a veteran. So right. um, yes, he does a great job of putting that ceremony together. And to your point, it is very emotional to see those folks. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, there are some veterans that may not walk anywhere else, but they'll walk in that march sure. that day. Right. And it's just wonderful to see them together. And I am very proud as mayor to be a part of that ceremony. I've mm -hmm. never missed one, as mm -hmm. you know, never right. missed one since I've been mayor. And we'll have a joint proclamation between city and the county commissioners have, we've already taken care of all of that. Mm -hmm. So if folks are interested in the car show, there's some things going on on Friday as well. Richard, tell us a little bit more about the weekend. Yeah, Friday afternoon, starting at four o'clock, we have what we call the cruise in. You don't have to register for this, it's just show up. We've got uh, Main Street and the part of uh, Pine Street set aside. We can handle 200 cars, come down, park your car, Talk to other cars enthusiasts we've got. Look what everybody else has. Yeah, visit the visit the restaurants and all. We've got great support from many businesses. Uh, uh, that's one reason we're able to donate the amount of money that we do after the event is because of the donations, sponsorships, and things like that. And we have a silent auction. We have a kids area also going to be in front of the courthouse this year. Oh, where great! There's several kids activities and things like that. So it is a family event. And uh, one reason I think the show is. For two reasons I think the show is very successful is one is because we judge by class, which is very unusual for a large all make and model car show. So there are, you know, you know, some cars that are pretty, you know, pretty nice, or many of the cars that are pretty nice, but they like that competition, you might say. And we have over 40 some judges that judge the cars uh, with the 400 cars. And that whole judging deal is a league of its own, mm -hmm. right? I mean, right. It, it's, um, some of us like to just walk down and pick the pretty color or the shiny mm -hmm. one, and um, the judges are looking right. for a lot more than that. Yeah, and then and the second part was because of, of the great downtown area we have, and the fact that there, the show is downtown. As many cars you, many car shows you go to might be at like the convention, you know, a convention center parking lot or a shopping center parking lot, which you know it gives you some. But the ladies were more willing to attend the, the and, and shop, you might say while the car is going on, because they can look at the cars for a little while, but usually I'm not, it's not uh, all ladies, but many ladies will want to do some shopping uh, with their friends. When, when or just do something different. Exactly. So yeah. that's a fun thing so to do. So they can do. take advantage of all the, all the aspects of the beautiful downtown Bass Run. The, the layout with, with the angled parking, that's almost become a trademark of the show. And because it's in a downtown area, that's why a lot of people like to come to this one. It's just, it's, it's a different feel. And they just like that feeling of the mm -hmm. antique cars in the downtown area. Yeah, the historic buildings as a background. In it. It's some of my favorite pictures of Main Street. All the cars mm -hmm. backed up with their hoods mm -hmm. up and um, our great downtown. And it's with the commitment to the veterans. Generally, we have good weather. I'm, I'm sure that we'll be blessed with good weather well, this year as well. I know. <laughs> well, only if it's good. Only if it's good, Bill. But um, it's visit, a great week. 
Visit right. Bash Shops Minute. And of course, we also have to mention Craig's Jewelers. Exactly. Talk about family business and mm -hmm. supportive. It's one of those times that you know it's great to be in Bastrop County. We look out for each other. We're respectful of our veterans. And it's really a great piece of Americana. Yes. And it's such an honor to be a part of it. Thank you for coming out and visiting with us. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you.